Paddy Franny and his two friends were hiking a trail in the Craigburn mountain range in New Zealand, enjoying the scenery, but what they saw next left them gasping in disbelief. Paddy raised his camera and snapped a photo that would throw everything scientists thought they knew about this possible living fossil into a frenzy of questions and uncertainty. But what might be even more of a twist is what witnesses claimed they saw the night before the photo was taken. But before we begin, if you love cryptids and want to learn the full story, both the legends and the facts delivered as a narrative story, then this guided tour is for you. Trek on over and tap that subscribe, like, or review button depending on where you watch or listen. Now, grab your binoculars and a field guide and get ready. The tour is about to start. I'm Cody, and you're touring Cryptids Across the Atlas. They were experienced trekkers, outdoorsmen of the finest sort. Paddy Friani and his two close friends were out exploring the Craigburn mountain range near Arthur's Pass. Paddy, a former member and instructor of the British Army's Elite Special Air Service, or SAS for short, had moved up to Arthur's Pass and opened a hotel and pub, offering folks a warm escape from the cold mountains above. But on his days off, that urge for adventure often overtook him. And on this day in 1993, Paddy's love of adventure would take a wild and life-changing turn. As they rounded the corner, they noticed a form off in the distance. There, standing on two legs, was this creature. It looked kind of like an emu, but there aren't wild emu or ostrich in New Zealand. Besides, if their eyes were not deceiving them, this thing was significantly larger than any bird they'd ever seen. That's when it hit him. Paddy knew without a shadow of a doubt what this was. It didn't matter that it was seemingly impossible. There was simply no other explanation. The three of them began to slowly approach this living relic, but as leaves crunched softly underfoot, the giant snapped its head around, took sight of them, and began darting off across the nearby stream and up into the mountains. Paddy, a man trained for the hunt, instinctually threw down his bag and began the chase. Thrashing through the water and hopping over boulders, Paddy gained a bit of ground before jerking his camera to his eye and snapping a photo. Then, the larger-than-life creature continued to bob and weave out of sight. Paddy made his way back across the stream, snapping a couple photos of the colossal three-toed tracks the feathered fossil had left behind, met back up with his two friends, and began the track back down to the pub, excitedly discussing how they had just all witnessed something impossible. You see, the New Zealand moa, the giant ostrich-like family of birds that could grow upwards of 12 feet tall, had supposedly gone extinct over 500 years earlier, yet here was one out in these mountains. The moa were a species of flightless birds that used to inhabit New Zealand up until around the late 14 to early 1500s. These nine different species, ranging in size from a small turkey up to the height of a small giraffe with their down-like plumage and long necks, used to run wild and free across the southern island. But when the Maori people, an indigenous Polynesian ethnic group, arrived on New Zealand's shores by canoe around 1350, they quickly began to hunt the wild moa for their meat and feathers. Within a couple hundred years, these birds had been hunted to extinction. But just because they are claimed to be extinct doesn't mean they actually are. Now this is the first time on this show where we have explored the other side of cryptozoology. Normally we discuss creatures that are hypothesized to exist but are not proven. But in the case of many cryptids, including the moa, this is classified as a cryptid because it was 100% proven real, but isn't supposed to exist anymore. But despite the long declared extinction, pockets of sightings have happened off and on for years, even into our modern era. Take the sighting of a large 20 foot tall bird sighting in the Otago region of the Southern Island in 1820 by George Polly. The sighting of this colossal bird, while probably grossly overestimated in stature, mind you, terrorized George so much that he openly stated how he ran away in terror. Or what about the sighting by professional bird painter John Gold, who reported what looked like a giant kiwi bird on the South Island? 
These birds stood roughly a meter or so tall, or about three and a half feet, and had large spur-like claws on their three-toed tracks. This account lines up perfectly with the later findings of fossilized moa tracks in that very same area. Or perhaps we could discuss the seal hunter who found moa bones in Molyneux Harbor in April of 1850 that still had flesh attached. Or the 14-inch tracks, freshly made in the mud, found by members of a surveying party between Takaka and Rawaka in the northern range of the southern island. There's even a sighting we have in full written detail by a group of miners in 1867. It reads, On Saturday, July 27th, about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, while enjoying a pipe by the side of a small fire in our hut, with the door open, my attention was suddenly directed to a large animal on the opposite range. I was not long in doubt as to what the stranger was. My mates cried out, It's the Moa! And the Moa, sure it was. The bird must have been more than a mile in a straight line from us, but as the horizon was clear, every movement could be detected. The bird was evidently going at a great pace, and I can only compare it to the movements of the emu or ostrich. While we had a full view of the bird for more than two minutes, when suddenly disappeared on the other side of the range. And since we have some time still, let's review a handful of sightings from the 20th century and into our modern time. Jules Berg and Arawata Bill were on their way to Milford from Preservation Inlet in 1928. That night, they stopped at Lake Widgeon and set up camp. As they lay there sleeping, Jules awoke from what sounded like a deer drinking water from the nearby stream. He grabbed his rifle and torch to seize the opportunity for fresh meat. But when he rounded the bend, he didn't see a deer, but rather three large birds standing in the water, each around a meter or so tall. He paused, startled, as the birds quickly darted off into the black-stained night. Later, in 1963, a scientist was out researching the fauna in the northwestern Nelson State Forest Park when he spotted and, and I quote, large moa-like bird in the nearby brush. In May of 1991, hiker Jim Stratton was trekking along the Waimakariri River when a large 11-foot tall dark-colored bird crossed the trail directly in front of him. Even as recently as 2007, a hiker supposedly witnessed this large bird near Fjordland. He claims he supposedly was able to capture photographic proof of the monstrous fowl along with photos of its footprints. But sadly, those photos were sold in private auction and the purchaser is unwilling to release them as proof. Convenient. Sightings like these go on and on and on. And yet, other than those photos from Patty in 1993 and a couple of castings along the way, we don't really have any tangible proof that these birds still exist. Hence the reason the moa is still classified as extinct, and supposed sightings are tossed in the cryptozoological bin. Oh, and I guess that's also why we are here together talking about it right now. There's just a lack of hard evidence pointing that a larger-than-life kiwi bird is still out there roaming the countryside. One group of scientists even went as far as to set up camp blaring recreated moa calls into the night, but they never heard a cry back. They chalked up sightings to an emu that possibly escaped from a local farm, or even a misidentified takahe, which ironically enough is another flightless bird long classified as extinct, but was proven to still actually exist in 1948. So maybe there really are moa still roaming the vast southern alps of New Zealand. Patty sure believed so. He was so certain that what he saw was real that he sent the negatives off to the University of Canterbury's Electrical and Electronic Engineering Department, where they spent three consecutive days analyzing this blurry photo. And to Patty's credit, the photos were deemed legit. They were proven to have had no modifications and did indeed depict what was believed to be, by the best of their judgment, a large brownish gray bird which matched the verbal account Patty gave flawlessly. But that's no surprise, because if the next part of our story is true, then of course his account would match. How could it not, when he had such an up-close and personal, hands-on look at it? As Patty grew in local fame and the Moa madness set in, 
Many started to hear murmurings that this whole thing might have just been a well-placed ploy to market his hotel and pub. How so? Because just a day before Patty approached the Christchurch newspaper office to report the photo he took, he was spotted perusing about the town in his pickup truck wearing a white lab coat. Witnesses state that when he believed the coast was clear, he pulled around to the back of the local museum, hopped out of his truck, and walked right in the back door with two assistants. Another witness mentioned how when they were in the museum that day, they noticed a group of scientists taking down a display in the extinct native bird section to perform restoration work. They mentioned how the group of supposed scientists hauled the large 12-foot statue out the back door where they could just barely make out the form of a small pickup truck where the men then loaded the Moa statue, tossed a sheet over top, and drove away. Maybe that's why in the photo, a boulder conveniently covers the legs of the colossal bird to perfectly obscure its base and placard. Despite these rumors, Patty furiously denied that this was a hoax all the way until his passing in 2012. He spent the rest of his life mounting expeditions to find more evidence that Moas were still among us, but his efforts never yielded any more return. At one point, he even convinced the Department of Conservation to launch a full-scale investigation into the continual existence of MOA in New Zealand, but after the rumors wormed their way in, they backed out last minute. Patty was publicly very frustrated with these rumors, never faltering from his story, and despite his joking personality, this was always one thing he took very seriously. So, what do you think? Do you believe Moa still roam the less traveled corners of New Zealand? Or are these creatures destined to the history books once and for all? Did Patty really capture a living relic? Or do you side with the skeptics? No matter which way you fall, Patty had at least a couple of believers on his side we know for sure. Because just a couple of weeks after Patty's incident, the local park authorities were out checking trail log books when they found a few signatures by a group of German tourists who had signed into and out of the trail just a day after Patty's alleged sighting. But they had left a bit more than just their names and timestamps in that log book, because there in black ink read a quick scribble of their encounter with a strange large bird that resembled an ostrich but was much, much larger out roaming that very same trail in the Craigburn Mountains. Join us next time as we journey back down south to Arkansas, where we'll meet its most legendary cryptid of all. Be warned, this swampy southern Sasquatch won't be your run-of-the-mill Bigfoot encounter story. If you love cryptids and want to learn even more about the creatures we just talked about, find us on TikTok or Instagram. Just search username at the cryptid atlas. By the way, the episode you just witnessed is both a podcast and YouTube video, so whichever format you prefer, we have you covered. Also, check out our interactive cryptid map to browse the globe and learn about cryptids from your favorite areas. Every single episode we make adds another pin to our map. You can find our social channels, the map, and more at thecryptidatlas.com. And when you find us, be sure to tap that follow button and get in on the action by dropping a comment on our recent videos. If you enjoy this show, consider sharing it on with a friend. And if you listen on Apple or Spotify, consider leaving an honest review to help other listeners know what to expect. Thanks for touring cryptids across the Atlas. Until next time, keep your eyes open. You never know what you might see just on the edge of the road. They chalked up Moa sightings to an emo. <sighs> emo? <laughs> an emo. <laughs> Uh, Arawata. Yeah, Arawata. Okay. Jules Berg and Arawata Bill. Arawata. They stopped at Lake Widgeon and set up camp. I have no idea if that's how you say that either. Takahi? Takahi. Takahe. Takahe. Okay. Oh, gosh. These words. Beep.